All right, so tonight we got a very, very special edition of uh, Chess Openings Explained. I'm Jonathan Schrantz, and today we had a very special request from Ben Simon. So Ben came to me, he said, hey, can you do the Von Henning Shara Gambit? And I said, sure. So here we are, um, and we're gonna look at a very aggressive and sharp opening tonight. And it's an opening where you have up a pawn, and sometimes it's not clear what your compensation is. So it is the kind of opening you really want to study because there's a lot of venom lying beneath this, this opening and there's a lot of potential um, for white to get into trouble really quickly when black develops a big initiative. So we're gonna jump over to the board right away and uh, the opening begins D4, D5. And after C4, E6, we have the Queen's Gambit declined, which is you know, a nice slow positional, white's a little bit better, you know, and it, there's lots of maneuvering in a long game, um, but there's a little surprise. And this really only works, this gambit, if white plays this exact move order. So if you are interested in, in playing the Charash, which is what we're gonna be looking at tonight, you do wanna have something in mind if, okay, if white exchanges on d5 first or plays knight f3, and it does limit white's options as well, but uh, that's not the theme of the lecture. So we're gonna look at, first of all, the Tarash. This is what uh, happens when black plays c5. It's a very aggressive and ambitious system. So very often, we're gonna end up with some weaknesses in the center. Black often gets an isolated queen's pawn, and white can try to prove that the center is a liability for black. Um, it's, it's really an ambitious way for black to play. And just to show the main line, just so we can compare it, we won't go too deep into it. Um, so normally they take on d5. This is the main move. And typically white plays the Rubinstein variation. Um, we'll just put this on the board. He fianchettos his bishop. Uh, and after some moves, we get a position like this. So this would be like the start of the main line for this system. and. White hopes to target this D pawn, so at any moment he can play D takes C5, and he has lots and lots of things aiming at D5, and the bishop can come to G5 and remove one of the defenders. Um, so that's what typically happens. So when you play the Tarash, perhaps White is thinking, I'm going to get this position, um, and you're going to play some very positional opening. And it, it, the Tarash is a very interesting one, so hopefully we have time at some point to come back and have a good look at it. But tonight we're going to focus on a very interesting gambit. So after they take on d5, instead of recapturing on d5, we're gonna take on d4. And this does involve a pawn sacrifice. So here's the start of the gambit. This is the von Henning Shara gambit. And there's actually two moves for white. I think the most obvious one is taking on d4. So we're gonna look at that first. But then we'll also talk about queen to a4, which is the second move that white may play, just with the idea of misplacing the bishop before taking back the pawn. So we'll look at that and talk about some of the differences. But first, let's look at what happens if white simply takes, this is the most obvious move, I think, if, if this is the first time you've ever seen it, um, the pawn's hanging, you just take it. Now, instead of just taking on d5 right away, we have time to exploit the pin on the d file, so we can get this free developing move in there. So we play knight to c6, you obviously can't take. And the white queen wants to stay connected to d5. So typically they retreat all the way back to d1. And the idea is, after we take here, we can see that black is going to lose his d-pawn. Um, so what, what is this? How does this gambit really work? Why can you play this way? Uh, I can just take it. And I guess I'll ask the audience, if you guys were white in this position, how would you take the pawn? With the knight, okay. And the main move is to take with the queen. But let's have a good look at this, so I'm glad somebody said it. Um, so in this position, black already can be better, and it's, it comes surprisingly quickly how he can become better with the move knight to f6. Okay, so I'm attacking your knight. There's Maybe some couple different moves you can consider, but let's just examine what happens if we trade. Okay, you're up a pawn after all, so trading seems to make a lot of sense. Um, but now you'll realize quickly, 
I do have sort of an annoying threat here as black. My next move is going to be bishop to b4. For example, um, if you just play knight f3, which might be fine, I'm going to throw this check in, and this is going to be kind of annoying for you. First of all, if you play here, you are undefending your b-pawn. So I can consider castling, or I can simply just take on b2. I get my pawn back. And OK, obviously, there's, there's lots of complications here, but um, this should be very decent for black. So there's no reason for white to give the pawn back. And if knight here, well, uh, you, just, you just have a very bad position. And in fact, after bishop to f5, white might already even be losing here. Just, it's hard to believe, so if you just play a few moves, um, let's see, how does it work? There's something like this in 95. Yeah, I think the line goes something like this, and OK, the computer is just like, I'm just winning somehow. And it just gives black monster numbers. Um, but it's just, even if you don't see the immediate like checkmate or whatever, you can just kind of tell that that's not what the knight wanted to do. That wasn't his, his dream job in life, was just to go back. Um, and OK, at some points tonight, we're gonna, we'll mess around with different things. But I don't think this one is of particular importance. So we will instead focus on the move that most humans have played in this position, which is the move a3. So this is the typical response um, that's been played. And now I want to introduce a new idea. Now, most humans play bishop to c5 with some threats. Uh, and it's, it's a tempting move. But there's all sorts of bishop moves that seem very tempting in this position. But I want to show you guys uh, just a little example of how quickly things can go wrong for white if I just play bishop e7 and I castle. Now, white is a long way from castling. So how can we exploit you know, our, our initiative, our lead in development here? Well, let's just put a few moves on. So we'll castle first. He'll start to get his pieces out. And um, after a move like rook to d8, this is another just free developing move. Let's get the rook into the action, attack the queen. If the queen goes to c2, um, well, c2 or b3, we're going to be able to, wherever it is, gain another tempo on the queen. So let's pretend that they go somewhere very, very safe, really far away. Uh, I do want to try this very interesting move in this position. Um, and then I'll test the class. And the move is bishop to h3. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, we've played this before. Not this variation. But this bishop to h3 is a very common motif. And what is the point? I mean, what's that all about? And I think you'll find it's very hard to play white in a position like this. Um, I'll ask you guys what you would do, but let's answer first this obvious question. What happens if you take the bishop? Um, now I take here. I'm on your rook. If you go here, I have a very annoying move. Bishop h4. And OK, if you have to play a move like rook g3 or something, well, I'm going to take it and win the exchange. And your king is kind of stranded there. So uh, this is not exactly what you want to do. Um, let's also mention this, I suppose. You can have your pick. Do you want to mate with a queen or a rook? All right, checkmate. Um, so that's how fast things can start to go wrong for white, because obviously he took a pawn in the beginning, moved his queen around a bunch. And black got all of his pieces out and castled early. But this is an interesting challenge. If you guys were white here, what would you play? Because I think you'll start to find it's, it's really hard to move any of your pieces. If you move your bishop, you're, yeah. if you move your bishop, you're undefending your b, yeah, your b pawn. If you move this bishop, you're losing your g pawn. How would you guys handle this as white? Because I also want to give you this idea that um, so you can kind of feel what the white player would feel in a position like this. They can get really uncomfortable. And just having played this with a lot of members this week, I've noticed that 
a lot of people get really, really scared when they're facing these lines. Uh, I just know people are like, well, you know, some people even wouldn't even play me because they're like, these lines are too sharp and scary and I don't want to do it. So that's sort of the mentality that you can often impose your will upon your opponent because you're playing this really sharp, complicated opening and all right, they're like, they get kind of nervous and it's very easy to make mistakes. Um, they try to play a little too cautious or they play inaccurately and they can get punished straight away. But uh, have you guys come up with a move here as white? Any, it's hard to even move. Rook B1 is like the only thing, I, Rook G1 rather. Rook G1, okay. So this is actually um, a move that I've, I've looked at already. So you really didn't want to put your Rook on G1. So this is an accomplishment for me. Even if I just retreat, I don't know, I can go here, I can go to E6, and then later try to control you know, some of the light squares over here. But even a move like this, now you're gonna find it very hard to castle as white. So that's not a move you wanted to play. So you're up a pawn, but you know, I, don't, I don't like the way some of your pieces are. <laughs> so I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I, I really prefer black here. And you know, and again, it's, if you have to make some silly move like that, then it's, it's really, black that's been taking control of the position. Um, but yeah, you can just already notice it's, it's just really hard to move. <laughs> white, in most of these lines, wants to keep the bishop on c1, at least until after he's castled, because the defense of this b pawn, we're going to see it more, is really important in a lot of variations. So, okay, this line has never been played, so we'll, we'll come off it for a minute, but I just wanted to give you that example um, of what you can possibly do if they take with their knight which at club level might be a popular move because I've, a lot of people at the chess club, they took with their knight this week. <laughs> you know, that's what they decided to do. Um, in the database, you'll find that hardly anybody has ever done it, but it's still something that's good to know because, okay, at the club level, that's a move that people play. Okay, but instead, let's look at the main move here, which is to take with the queen. Now, if you play bishop to d7, you'll transpose into the later part of this lecture, the main line. Um, and when deciding, back in this position, after I take here, what to do, whether you're just going to take right away or if you're going to check and then take this way and triangulate. Um, one important thing is uh, the, the check move order, if you play queen a4 check, you're avoiding certain lines that uh, the black player can choose from. So in this position, we can go right back into the main line. We have that option. Uh, bishop d6 might also be possible. But it is also interesting to look at this line, which is sort of an endgame variation. And it's kind of strange because when you're down a pawn, you don't often think, I want to just go right for this endgame. And if you look at different sources, they have mixed feelings about this position. Some people think this is just fine for black. Some people think, well, this is, you shouldn't play this way at all. You should avoid it. So we'll have a look at it, and we'll give you guys a, a chance to decide for yourselves. Um, okay, so we're down a pawn, but already black has some very uncomfortable threats. And so already white has to play very, very accurately. You know, if you let me go to one of those squares, and then I go to c2 and fork your king and rook, you could end up in a lot of trouble. And uh, I think, too, I, I really do want to challenge the class just to give you an idea of how tough it can be to play the white side of this position. If you guys were white, how would you handle this position? There's, there's a lot of ways you can go wrong here, so. And when, you, when you're white and you, know, you accept a gambit, you kind of want to prove that I can take it and hold on to the pawn. That's, that's the whole point. <laughs> you have to say your gambit is unsound, I'll just take it, hold on to it. And it is sort of a theoretical class, so we do, at least in this class, care about trying to achieve a you know, theoretical advantage from the opening. Uh, some people like to play practically and play stuff that you know, doesn't give you any advantage and then you try to play that position. That's another approach to chess, but we want to play the, the most precise move here and try to prove an advantage as white. Right, you can't stop me from going to both squares. You can only stop me from going to one. Choose wisely. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe A3. Maybe, maybe A3. And worst case scenario, if he makes it to D4, I could mm -hmm. self-pin. I don't know. Now the self -pin. What, what are we going to do? You're going to run your king over here? I'm going to run my king Is over that what you're going to do? I'm thinking about it. Or I guess, which square did you want to go to? I'll let you... Um, 
What do you pick? Right. Pick your poison. You're right. Uh, <laughs> You're, yeah, you really want to walk into that? No, not really. I'm just at a loss for, for, for an action. Yeah, so this is actually, after A3, already losing. I mean, okay, you can't walk into the pin because if you go to the light square, I can check you, you know, if your king goes here. And then you know, I can drop it in. Also, I could just check and, and go here. So, yeah, you, you can't do that, which leaves you kind of limited <laughs> as to your choices because well, I'm just forking you, choice. right? And then I just fork you, um, and that wins for black. So yeah, you're already losing, and this can be a massive point scorer at the club level because, <laughs> you know, A3 is just so natural, but if you just keep doing this, it doesn't matter where you go. Um, I've already checked this, so I just kind of knew that That's this was the move. Um, you do this and check and take the rook and they, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Ugh, ugh, eek, ugh. You know, you have, to, you have to go here. And this, and then I take all your stuff. Ugh. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if somebody's never seen this before and they're thinking, why'd you go into the end game? I'm up a pawn. It's very easy to go wrong in A3. Just already game over. So, that being said, the main move here is E3. And the point is kind of funny. Um, now, uh, there's different things that black can do, and you can choose, you know, you can do, do other things, but let's look at this very entertaining variation. So knight to b4, okay, obviously I'm jumping into c2 again, but now we'll see the difference with the move e3. White now has, well, only one move. Um, you can pause at home. I'm going to give it away for the live audience. The only move white has here, bishop b5 check. And this is sort of disruptive. I don't want to drop my knight back. I don't want to go. I don't want to go and trade. Um, so I don't want to move my pieces back. So I'll have a little bit of guts. I'll play king e7. And this is the move. And now white's best move here is again funny. So you may want to pause and see if you can play white's best move, because again. You know, white kind of has to know this, or sometimes it's hard to find a move like this. But the main move, king f1. What? Now <laughs> you're not going to fork me. So look at this, already a very crazy variation. Both kings have moved to seemingly random positions. Um, and, you know, so it's already sort of an amazing position. You don't see this every day. <laughs> and we'll give you just a, a little more insight into what might possibly happen if this variation should occur. OK, let's just develop our knights. That makes sense. And already, um, we'll see sort of some tactical continuation here. First, I'll play knight to c2. OK, force you over. I'm just controlling e1 with my knight. And now a tactical move. Knight to d4. And OK, most people here have played bishop to e2 controlling you know, some of these squares, especially d1. And play might continue like, like this. Um, you, can, you can see an example like this. So this might, you might get a lot of pressure here for your pawn. So this is probably fine for black. Um, I mean, I don't know. I assume white's better because that's how chess works. No matter what, white's always a little bit better in the opening. But OK, this is playable for black. So this is sort of the position that you might want to take a look at. But what I think is, is rather humorous about this position, um, if we go back to this position here, is that white can fall for the trap of taking this knight and allowing white to drop his rook all the way back to d1. So even taking this is fine. Uh, so I just want to show this mostly because it's amusing, at least to me. OK, so we go here, take the rook, knight g3. And the rook is trapped. OK, I take here. And your rook is trapped. All right, you take me. I take you. Bishop d3. And it looks like white is simply playing king d2 and then capturing this piece. Now, there's a very, very crafty plan for black. Very crafty. I'm going to play this move g6. We'll, we'll understand. 
Now, your best move is probably to go here. We'll look at this. We'll come, we'll come right back. We'll look at king d2. So this is probably your best move. I take here. You take here. And then also what's funny is the computer wants you to just stay in the center, because that's what the computer cares about. You can also take here. But it's funny, the computer move is, yeah, just go to the center. But I think against a human, I'd probably take the pawn. But <laughs> OK, so here, and the computer's like equal, equal, equal. All right, good job. You equalized with black in a very complicated variation. But I do want to point out this other quite entertaining situation. And now there's one winning move for black. And it might really surprise you, so go ahead and pause your video. Uh, we'll give you guys a chance here to see if you can be a superstar. No, you're already shaking your head. Yeah, yeah I can't I do it. So it is amazing, yeah. Yeah, don't give up. You, you, do have to, you do have to think pretty deep into the position, I guess. Mm -hmm. You want to move the king to get the dark squared bishop out? OK. I'm going to just take your knight, though. It doesn't matter where you go. I'm going to take your knight. And something like this is better for white. Two pieces for a rook. Yeah, white's better. So it's amazing. So I'm going to give it away for the live audience. Uh, the amazing winning move here, bishop h6. Doesn't make any sense. OK, doesn't make any sense. Why would this pin mean anything? Well, OK. So if you take, check. And you can move your king away, and then I take your bishop. Though surprisingly, you also can play this move that at first just looks like a blunder, but it might be your best move. Um, here. And now, some people, a lot of people I showed this to, they can't find this move. So again, you may want to pause your video. Um, OK, your rook is hanging, so if you take my bishop, I take your rook. So again, we have to be sort of cunning. OK. so. The move here is just move your rook backwards. And if you take this, I have rook d1. And I get the pieces back, and I'm up material. So whichever piece you save, I take the other one. Um, OK, so we can see there's some sort of really imaginative solutions in a lot of these positions. So you do kind of need to be sort of a creative player. I mean, just look at this line. You know, even, and OK, if you've never seen this as white, and the, the black king just confidently goes to e7. You just slam it. It's like, uh oh, I mean, what's going on? How do I solve these issues? And he has to come up with the move king f1. Uh, but we go back. So that's the end game variation that you can choose to go into or not. Obviously, again, if in this position you desire, uh, you can transpose to what we're about to see with the move bishop to d7. OK. Would you say the reason that that works Yes, definitely. Yeah. So the question is, uh, why does this work? Is it just because you're head in development? And certainly it is. And you already have a threat. So it's going to be black that has threats really early on. It's move eight. And already, you know, our knight is going to one of these places. And you have to be able to figure this out as white and play very accurately. So OK, this, again, can be a, a big point scorer <laughs> in your, your tournaments if people just mess up immediately. Um, so here we go. OK, they take on d4. And we'll look at what most consider the more accurate line. Although if white wants to go into the end game variation, he can play that other way. Um, so now, OK, I have to put my bishop in the way. So now when you take my pawn, I don't have knight c6 gaining a tempo. And OK, probably knight c6 is a better move for me than bishop to d7. So OK, I take here. White takes back. Again, we're down a pawn. Um, so I'm thinking maybe, maybe for tomorrow's lecture, eh, we could do it now. Maybe we'll do it now. Yeah. Um, OK, the main move here, you're on our b pawn, knight c6. But uh, a rare move, and it kind of keeps with the theme of the opening. I don't think it's a particularly good move, but refuting it can be hard. Is this move knight to f6? 
uh, offering the bee pawn, which most humans don't take, but is probably the critical line. I don't know why people don't take it. And this would transpose to what we're going to see if after this we play knight to c6, and then we're going to get the main line again. Um, yeah, do we want to do this today or tomorrow? Maybe tomorrow. Go, go prepare this, and I'll play either side you want tomorrow. Yeah. Um, tonight we're just going to focus here. We're going to try to get closer to the main line. So knight to c6, okay, shielding our b-pawn. Knight f6 comes next. We develop with tempo, and hopefully we can get our pieces out a lot faster than our opponents and, and crush them immediately. Now the most popular move, hey Aaron, come on in, is perhaps the most natural move. Knight f3, just develop your, your piece. Uh, e3 is likely to transpose if that's what white decides to play in this position. But I do want to show one game with the move bishop to g5. And this is a sort of famous game, Vajra Pirtz versus Alexander Aliakin. It was played in 1931. So we will check out this game. And OK, again, we see that this bishop to g5 move usually is not to be recommended for white. Um, sometimes, imagine that, that white queen is out of the way. Um, sometimes it's because we put our, our bishop here and then our queen here and we attack two things. So that sometimes is the reason. Um, and sometimes, as we'll see, if there's ever a knight here and you take it and I take back, we saw kind of in that other variation, that there's, it's really important to protect that b pawn. So in general, that's not the way white should set up. You should play knight f3, e3, and then you should go castle. Um, but OK, how can this? Seems pretty good. So knight d6 was played. And the queen went back to d2. h6, do you want to give me your bishop? And so sort of a controversial decision already. White parts with his bishop. OK, we take back. And white says simply, I'm up a pawn. We traded a piece. Um, but this can actually be quite dangerous. And white goes wrong immediately in this game. So I have two bishops. I might even think of castling queenside, lining my rook up with your queen. That could help me gain more time. And in the game after e3, yeah, a castle. And we'll see in lots of lines, there's always a rook lined up with the queen. And then sometimes we're threatening discoveries. Um, and in this game, remarkably, white castled queenside. And already, the game is over. So shockingly, white is already losing. Um, so I do I want to give you guys the chance. Can you play like a world champion? Uh, can you play like Aliakin in this position? So go ahead, pause your videos, um, and, and, and then the little kid will figure it out while everybody else is scratching their head. Do you have a good discovered attack? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like... Yeah, so it looks like, yeah, if you just move, then, okay, what a blunder, I just take this. And you're, well, you're, you're going to take it with a rook? Oh, okay. There's a knight, yeah. Uh, okay, so even that might be good for black, though. Uh, you can do even better. So white, okay, he saw that. He's, you know, even if you just see this, then, okay, all right, I've already won some material, and you're still exposed, and my pieces are pretty good. Um, but white had a, an idea in mind. His idea was, OK, when you attack my rook, I play knight d5. OK, so it's getting complicated. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's already a very complicated position. And that's what you're going to get when you play this opening. When you play this opening, you're going to get a complicated, messy position. So it's good for beating lower rated players. It's good for surprising higher rated players. Uh, OK, and it's also interesting, too, if you just, the von Schera henning gambit as a whole, if you check different sources, some will say it's refuted, it's super dubious. Some will say, no, it's quite valid. It's, you know, there's no refutation. Um, so when there's a line like that and people are sort of undecided, maybe it's, maybe it's unplayable, maybe it's not, that means at the club level, it's definitely playable. And you're gonna... Queen d6, yep. OK. Um, I guess I'll not let you take my rook. I guess maybe knight f3 too, but maybe, yeah. You can do better. <laughs> just 
take the rook and then the kid. Just, no. just take the rook. Oh, well, what? Yeah, I'm the queen, but you're be and then you're taking the queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can save your bishop and I save my knight somewhere. I don't know, white's probably better, but it is kind of, it's probably easier to play black, but I don't know, I assume white is better here because I'm also a pawn, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you don't do something brilliant, then I'm up a pawn. So if we trade lots of stuff and I don't get checkmated and you don't win any material, then yay, I did it. So. The amazing move played in this position, and again, you can pause if you need a little bit more time. Rook takes d5. Just, just give me it. OK. Now, for another amazing move. And this is sort of the kind of move, it's, it's a theme we've seen a little bit, but it's going to be on the other side of the board. So. Um, black played another really surprising and powerful move in this position. And this is the, the true gem of the whole game. This is what makes this game so famous and so amazing, is this next move that, okay, presumably the opponent did not see this move, because this, man, it's a, it's a good move. Once you see it, bishop a3. Bishop a3. Excellent. Yeah, so I'm threatening mate. That's, that's good. Uh, I'm going to play rook d8. I'm going to take your rook. I got all sorts of stuff. So he was not tempted to take in the game, which very smart. Now it's, it's over. Check. If you go here, I'm going to take all your stuff. Uh, OK, so if you go here, now I can take this. Check. You take this. I'll, right, let me take all your stuff. Let me take all your stuff. Let me go here. And you're up a piece. Um, but I know how to use my pieces better than you. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to use my pieces, and I should be able to, to win this game here as black. I mean, uh, <laughs> OK. All right, so going back to this position. So he didn't take, which is, OK, very smart. All right, queen b3. I didn't get checkmated, yay. So he took the rook. Yeah. He took. Now instead of moving the bishop, which obviously is tempting, he took on f2. You take my bishop, I take your bishop with check. All right, so he defended. All right, you're attacking my bishop. We'll get my bishop out. Um, and we'll go a little bit quickly through this game. Check. I do not want to trade queens with you because I want to checkmate you. Uh, but here again, we'll pause because, OK, another really powerful move was played here by black. So I do want to give you guys a time um, to look at this, this position as well. You'll have to tell me what time it is because I don't, I don't have any idea. You made me turn my cell phone off so that the aliens don't hear me. So what, what, yeah, what time is it? 7-11? All right. So we'll probably do it in two parts, because there's a lot more. I just want to check on b4, but I feel that it's probably something stronger. You want to check on b4? Knight b4. Knight b4 check? OK. I have, do I have one move? OK, I found it. Uh, I assume you're better, but what? What's your move now? Am I, am I supposed to be scared? No. Yeah, I was probably, I mean, in the, in the game, I would have had to probably defend the knight or, or retreat it. Probably, yeah, take a five, but this is not the line. Um, five, well, I mean, ah, what's funny? Yeah, it works, I think. Here, I'm going to do to you what you did to me. You ready for this? I hope it works, because I'm going to do it to you. You ready? Ready. Ha-ha. Ha-ha. <laughs> right back at you. All right. 
All right, I threatened mate and your queen. Hooray. Now don't do something I didn't see, because I'm a genius, if you don't refute me. <laughs> take what? Take with the knight. Oh, yeah, the queen. Yay. <laughs> Go me until the internet puts it on their computer and refutes me. Um, OK, so again, instead, and also it should be pointed out, white does have a mini threat in escape in this position. He wants to go here, check, and then force the queen trade. Okay. So, and then black's still a lot better, but if you don't checkmate me, I survive. And black really wanted to checkmate his opponent. OK, so he played rook c8. Bringing my rook into the game, discoveries, and white did end up checking. The crazy 95 move was played. Yeah, it is awesome. <laughs> OK, he threw a check in. And OK, after he protected his rook and threatened rook a5 and bringing the queen, ah, here white already gave it up. So uh, it's a, again, it's a powerful display of the initiative over material. And again, here's your extra material, but you didn't use it. So. That's what Black is playing for. He's trying to get a, an early attack or try to create problems as early as possible. And sometimes it's you know right after the opening has started, there's already problems that you need to solve. And that's difficult over the board. So this is an excellent weapon um, that I would, I would recommend to, that a lot of people give a serious look at. OK, we're going to return here to the initial position, and we take on d4. All right, now we want to look at the main line after queen to a4. Um, and actually, I also do want to mention this move. I don't... b5. You didn't see that move come in. So, OK. And this move was played in 2006 in the US Championship. Uh, it was a game between Camila Baganskaiti and Hikaru Nakamura. So um, Hikaru did lose this game as black. <laughs> but if. And I guess this move is pretty, pretty dubious. I mean, don't, you don't want to play this way. But I do want to, again, assuming we have time, show you guys that it can be very difficult when surprised like this to actually find the right continuation. And I think if white finds the next series of 20 moves, he's probably better. And I guess Hikaru was like, all right, I'll risk it. And in the game, you know, it was sort of even forever and ever. White didn't truly punish it. I mean, it was, um, it was a good game. You can go look it up. Um, but, you know, he's risking, all right, I might be worse against the lower rated opponent, and then hopefully I can outplay her from that position. But what would you guys do here? I mean, this already is, is complicated. I'd like to just see what you guys would do, just so that you, you can put yourself in the mind of the white player when totally surprised. Is it B5? Ah. <laughs> I mean, I don't even understand the point. I just want to... Okay. He doesn't understand point. the point. Yeah, I don't know. What do you want to take? Take on d4. OK, this certainly makes a lot of sense. OK, now again, I exploit the pin. All right, well, you can go back. Now I take here. And here's where you can mess up. Yay. We'll give you the chance to mess up. You can do it. Well, yeah, I'll take on d5 with the queen. I'll take on d5 with the queen? Yep. All right. The main move there actually was e4. Just to, <laughs> this is <laughs> that's the move. So, but let's look at this because this is what I think a lot of people would play. And it's not so important. I just wanted to hopefully get the initiative here. Otherwise, you'll have to cut so much of this out. When they outplay me and beat me, then <laughs> it'll look bad on the internet. Especially if Aaron outplays me from this position. OK, yep, that's the move. Uh-huh. I think it's here, or is it knight of maybe knight of six first? All right, knight of six. Yeah, I think it's here, and then, yeah, I think it's something like this. Let's see if we can remember the line. Um, and I go here. I think this is line. 
So there's stuff like this, and okay, I don't think that this should really work out <laughs> um, for you, even if you take this way. So, all right, I'm not trying to say b5 is a good move or you should play it or anything. Yeah, so this is probably the simplest way to get an advantage. So I, I do like the way you guys play it after that. In the game, she went here, which is a, a bit more theoretical. So it's also should be fine. And you're threatening some double checks. Uh, so you have to play here. And now, just move d6. So it forces us, really, to take the knight. I can't let you fork me. And I block. And OK, in the game, there was a very interesting position. Um, we're not going to go much farther than this. But again, you, you can see that this is sort of the way that black you know, chose to set up. And it was probably already equal here, so maybe there was some play that could have been better along the way. But I just want to point out this possibility. You can go explore it on your own if you want. There's the super crazy radical b5. It's no good, but you know you startled him. You didn't see that coming. And that was the position that he got out of it. Yeah, so it's right after you check b5. All right, but we'll we'll play the normal move. Yeah. Actually, so I think actually I'm gonna we're gonna jump to the other game. Or, but this is the game between Irina Crush um, and Spyrodon Capnissus. We'll say that's it. We can't see the names, so we'll say that that's their names. Ben Simon will know. Um, and we'll get to this. Let's just check out this game real quick. All right. So check. We're looking at this variation. Let's play the normal way. We'll take knight c6. And we're going to look at the main move here, knight f3. So this is the main move. And white's plan is simple. I'm up upon. I develop. I castle. OK. I get this free move. So when you go back. Bishop c5. All right, taking aim at f2, maybe. Very active post for my bishop. White typically blunts him out. Now this move, castle. queen e7. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not telling you which way I'm going to castle. And very often, you do want to castle queenside, bring your rook to the d-file. Uh, obviously, your queenside is a little bit loose as black, so it can easily backfire. But we're playing for the, the quick initiative. We've got to make use of it right now. Right here, right now, we're going to use the initiative. And as soon as you play here, I'm going to castle. And I'm already threatening bishop to h3. So yeah, I mean, silly move, bishop h3. I'm on your queen and your g-pawn. Um, so you do have to be careful. So white normally defends his g-pawn by castling. And so here we get the start of the main line. And now we're going to see both sides, I mean, it's opposite side castling, attack each other. So already another exciting move. G5, here I come. You want to take it? Um, if we had more time, we could look at it. And white maybe doesn't lose if he takes it. Maybe he doesn't lose, but it's close. Um, I mean, one problem, eh, we'll look at it, uh, is if here, and you just drop back, which, yay, I, I got it, and I run away, um, you're already in trouble. So, you know, you can do this and this, but you're already in trouble. And then all my knights jump in here, you don't like it. Uh, also, I take your queen. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so yeah, I threaten your queen and your pawn. But, um, but I think you have to play g3. And who knows? I take some, I take your queen, I guess. Uh, but there is this move. Eh, we'll go over it. I don't care how impatient Ben Simon is. There's this move, e4, and we'll just show the super monster crazy computer line here. And then white plays this confusing move. And we take, and we go here and run the bishop. Um, but now he plays here. He can't really move the knight still. And white is threatening to go here. Like if here, which is the obvious move here. And then, you know, if you move, I'm taking this. And if you take back, I embarrass you. So the computer wants you to just take this. What's the big deal? <laughs> and then this crazy, crazy line, and eh, black spender. So white maybe doesn't lose if you take that g pawn. 
but it's very, very scary. <laughs> Hopefully you, you can avoid the temptation. And among the other moves that white can play, the sharpest and most exciting and perhaps the best is to fight fire with fire. B4, doing the same exact thing. And probably black is just best advised to accept this gambit. And white is hoping I get to use the B file, my queen comes in, my knights jump in, and you know, all this stuff happens to you, and I go like this with white, and then I win. That's what white is hoping for. So after the move B4, black is probably best to just accept this gambit. And now let's, let's see if white can get enough pressure here. Bishop b2 is the main move, but in the game, knight to b5, which also is a common idea. She'll, she'll put her bishop on b2 in just a second. Or I guess he will put his bishop on b2. Um, so white is hoping I get some pressure here. And the knight is coming in. Um, it's, it's quite sharp. It's quite dangerous for both sides. Move h5 was played. And white went through with the plan we mentioned and just brought the queen in. So this is why you play this too. It's very sharp. It's very double-edged. Uh, both sides are going to attack each other. But in this position, you can play the move a6. And so basically, you're forced to take on c6, because if you just draw back, for example, we take here, I'm on your queen, and I'm on all your stuff. So basically, you have to take. But now what are you going to do? Your knight's in a pin. Well, you took on f6. And this is, the, I guess, the last time we'll ask the audience what they would play in this position. Um, so again, you can pause at home. It's not taking on f6, you're guessing. All right, good guess, because otherwise, why did I ask you? Because um, here, and this is probably good for white, because my attack is still going on. So instead, a nice move was played. After you took my knight, simply, queen e4, threatening mate. So white decided not to get mated. That was, that was good. So white parted with the pawn. And in this game, some mistakes were made, but it's still quite a, quite a nice game. Um, black took here, which probably isn't right. Uh, I think it's here. This is the move you should play. Um, maybe bishop c5, I don't know. Um, but after here, white took this. Black went here, which is actually a mistake. But for time, let's get through this game. Another check. And now the, the winning move is here. But let's focus on what happens. Black took here a counter blunder. So now again, it's black to play. And black has a very strong move, so white must have overlooked the power of this next move. Um, if you can find this next move, you win. So I, guess, I will ask you guys one more question. What would you guys play in this position? What is the winning move for black? Rook h8. Rook h8. Awesome move. Well, I, I keep awesome move. Yeah, the point is, yeah, so you can't play here due to this. So there's, oh, sorry, after this move, there's just nothing that can be done um, remarkably. This is what was tried in the game. But now another strong move, just rook d3, attacking f3 again. That's strong enough. And you're going you're gonna to like the finish. All right, he takes here. White gets desperate. Check. And taking on b7. OK, this is desperation, but you know I'm trying. And now after this move, a very similar move to the Aliakin game, in that it's a discovered move that just wins. So here, rook b3, game over. Um, yeah, it's, it's mate in three, so you can give some of your pieces away and then get mated. So I hope that gives you guys a good 
indication of just how sharp and aggressive this opening can be. And for those that really like to fight for the initiative, especially with black early on, you want to play some fighting chess. You want to get you know, the battle going right away. And you want to prove that, yeah, you can take your pawn, but I'll get all my pieces out and I'll cause threats for you very, very early on in the game. And this might be the opening for you. Hopefully that helped, and I'll see you guys uh, next week. Thank you.